Mish Mash! Kid Bash Corner! Heya, today we're going to be doing another Kill Team Kid Bash in the form of the Inquisitorial Agents. This set has some undoubtedly superb designs, giving the player 11 options in terms of operatives. However, the box itself limits us to only 7 fully assembled models, 4 of which are actual Inquisitors. These four bodies come with two unique sets of bits to build an operative, leaving us to carefully pick and choose which minis we take to the tabletop. Now, this isn't uncommon for Kill Team boxes, but I feel like this one really stings considering how small the team is. Today I decided to take it upon myself to use some bits laying around my hobby space to construct and Frankenstein together remaining four operatives so I actually have some options to mix and match with my roster. But before we get into it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications on to see more Kit Bash videos like this. It really helps. So first and foremost, I want to show you the ops I actually built from the base kit. This being the Interrogator, Pistolier, Penal Legionnaire, and the Mystic Respectfully. As you can see, I did some very light kit bashing on the Pistolier, giving her a good old Skitari Melon. I also decided to swap the Quest Keeper's head with the Penal Legionnaire. I just think it looks better here. But the penalty with assembling these miniatures is we were left with the Hexorcist, Death World Vet, Enlightener, and the Quest Keeper to be kit bashed. Undoubtedly, these models are cool, but it's kind of a shame that I can only build a few of them. But that's where I step in. We'll be starting with the Quest Keeper, as I feel this kit bash is the most beginner friendly. To start things out, simply assemble a Sisters of Silence body, and we're going to be gluing on the Quest Keeper's absurdly giant chainsword into place. Pretty self explanatory. As you can see, these arms are already a damn near perfect fit, so using some Tamiya will ensure it glues in place. There will be a gap, but this is very easily alleviated by gluing on the pauldrons as is. The only truly convoluted portion of this miniature is snipping off the ball joint from the Sisters of Silence head. I then glued this on very messily using sprue goo, and this really won't be an issue. It'll be almost entirely obscured by the armor itself, and the head I'm using is from the Steel Helms kit. This yelling head works pretty perfectly for a zealot. I then apply a little bit of glue to her belt, and I'd attach this holster from the Inquisitor kit itself. I'm not entirely sure who this belongs to in terms of the operatives, but I think it fits really nicely and it's snug. Also, can you tell this is a shot I took before I added the ball joint to her head? She looks like a damn tortoise. As a final step, I'll be adding in some liquid green stuff to seal in any gaps on the cape and the pauldron. Watering down the green stuff just a tad is really helpful as it helps conform to the cape's pelt pattern while simultaneously filling up any gaps. I find this stuff to be very helpful in terms of kit bashing, and it's not the only time in this video that you'll see it being used. And once I've primed her up, she looks amazing. There's actually very minimal kit bashing here, and on top of it, she can be used as both an Inquisitor or a Sister of Silence. The rules of the Inquisitorial Kill Team allow you to run Kazarkin, Scions, and Sisters of Silence, which is pretty cool. I might end up running some of my Steelhelm Scions with this team. And speaking of steel helms, I began the Death World vet by snipping down a steel helm's body. The chess piece I'm using for reference here is actually the Penal Legionnaire, but both the Penal Legionnaire and the Death World vet share the same body, just in case you don't actually have the kit yet. Here I just want to make sure that the chest will conform to the body in terms of lining up with the head slot. This negative space will be fixed with green stuff, as you'll see coming up. As you can see here, I would glue on a Sisters of Silence cape to the back, while gluing it in tandem to the straps on the Death World Vet torso. I apologize for not getting this on camera, it was a lot of fiddling around and it was practically incomprehensible footage. But from what I can show you, we're essentially filling up his torso with green stuff like cheap insulation. This texture looks really rough now, but with the pieces glued in place, it'll look just fine. You just gotta trust the process. For this very wide area under the knife, I glued on a classic crack grenade from the Scions kit. I really should have waited a day for the green stuff to fully dry, but I'm a wild man and patience is a virtue I'm unwilling to undertake. 
Here I'm filling in this gap between his legs and the loincloth. This will be covered up, but admittedly I should have watered it down a little bit more. Had I been any more neglectful, the texture would probably be really ugly. Next I would sand down the arms and glue them into place using super glue. Again, probably should have waited a little bit longer for the green stuff to fully dry, but the mini is sturdy and looks great at the end of the day, so whatever. Once we glue the arms on, this miniature really does start popping into life. I know from a long time of miniature painting that trusting the process is something that you just gotta do, but admittedly I was a little nervous. However, once these arms were in place, all my worries were quickly alleviated. I didn't feel like using the weird lobotomite head from the actual kit, so I ended up using a head from the blooded kill team box. I snipped it to size, sanded it down a little bit, and fitting it in place is relatively easy once I overcame my Butterfinger syndrome. Once it was in a good spot, I would go over the entirety of the mini using a little bit of sprue goo to seal in any ugly spots and gaps. And as kind of a last minute bit, I decided to shave off the little knife of the kettle helm's belt. I then decided to glue on this gun holster and severed hand from the Inquisitor kit. Albeit this is rather abrupt as I really didn't do any cleanup. And it looks pretty damn good. Why does he have a hand? But these questions can wait as the rest of his body looks pretty damn good too. I'm really really happy with how this guy turned out. I knew I wanted to run this guy over the penal legionnaire as I found his stats to be much more appealing. So going full kit brash crazy and making this guy really unique while keeping the base kit pieces intact was incredibly fulfilling. And once he's primed, I think he looks like an official mini. Sure, there are tiny tints of the green stuff texture, but this is mostly regulated to under very obscured areas. The amount of cool flair we were able to add to an already exceptionally detailed mini is something that makes kit bashing such a gratifying process. Next up is the Enlightener, uh, the knife lady or whatever. First, I'm assembling this fur coat that is originally intended for the Hexorcist. It's kind of a shame as I did accidentally destroy the bits intended for the original Enlightener, but I think what I made out of this is actually something pretty cool. Once the fur piece was assembled, I ended up using a Cawdor gang member body, and I'm snipping the absolute shit out of the upper half to make sure this piece of fur adheres well. Admittedly, I was a little aggressive with how I was snipping this as you can see, but we gotta do what we gotta do to make some fantastic miniatures, right? But with time, I would continually snip away and sand down the upper body and check to see how well the fur pattern would fit. Once I found a good happy medium, I'd adhere it using Tamiya to make sure it melted the plastic on both ends. Once it was good and stable, I'd add on a little bit more cement and I'd fill in any gaps using more liquid green stuff. Honestly, Sprugu may have been a better option for this portion, but I think the green stuff works just fine. Once I was happy with the placement, i then glue on the head, and for this I simply used the Mystic Head from the base kit. The blindfold and these garbs make them look akin to a Souls-like NPC. I really love this mini already. Next I'd snip this knife hand from the blooded kit, and I'd glue it into place. Pretty self-explanatory. Originally I wanted to use both knife bits that come with the blooded set, but for some reason the other knife is just missing. I have no idea where I put it. So I ended up using an open hand for the other arm which will be shown later on.
I glue this little thingy of scrolls which comes with the base kit on her back. I think this looks really cool, especially for a blindfolded character. While the pieces settled into place, I used a little bit of Tamiya on the drying green stuff. Again, probably should have waited a little longer for this. Next, I'd glue on the satchel and sheath sword which came with the Steel Helms kit. This little grabby hand which came from the blooded set was perfect, giving the impression she's about to unsheathe her second blade. Lastly, I glued on this little book and key charm thingy to the front half. This came from the Sternguard Space Marine set. And with all these little charms, I actually didn't end up using any purity seals. Kinda surprising, but she looks really good. I think this makes her kinda versatile. I kinda wanna run this character as a D&D mini and for the kill team. I feel the ambiguous charms give her a rather universal appeal to both fantasy and sci-fi. Moving on to the Hexorcist, I hate to admit this, but I ended up using another Kadar body. Not even the first time I've done this, by the way. Check out that short, I think you'll really like it. But we'll start out by gluing on the Enlightener's melon to the body itself. The hood combined with the rags looks just too good to pass on. Next, we'll begin by snipping the shotgun arms down to size. This was quite a tedious process, and admittedly, I feel like I ended up overcomplicating this. I feel like it may have been easier to just snip the undersides of the mini sleeves and slip the arms in as is. But, as you can see, I'd make sure to have one arm glued in place while fiddling with the other. I fiddled with this a little too long. Eventually, they stayed in place, but as you can see, there's a major gap between the torso and the arms. You already know what I'm planning on doing about this. But first, I decided I had more charms in the interim. I glue on this giganto purity seal from the Grey Knight's base kit, and a smaller one in tandem. I'd also glue on this little pack of shotgun shells that comes with the set for the Hexorcist. Also, I don't know why I didn't fully strip this mini, by the way. I was just really in a mood to do some kit bashing, and it totally slipped my mind. Please forgive me. Okay, like I alluded to earlier, I'd begin by filling in the arm and the torso gap using a little bit of liquid green stuff. Not a little bit, a lot of it. And after doing so, it ended up looking pretty decent. Admittedly, it doesn't exactly look like a flesh texture, but I plan on painting these as sleeves instead. And as a whole, I think the mini looks badass. I think I really captured the identity of the Hexorcist as a class, being that they're essentially a whack job spouting religious expletives while mowing down people with a shotgun. Plus that hooded cowl just looks way too cool. This box is truly loaded with amazing kitbash potential. I'm almost a little tempted to get another box down the line just so I can kitbash some custom versions of the other operatives. It's a big maybe. But hey, if you guys like this video or find it helpful and show it in the form of liking, commenting, and subscribing, maybe I will. It really lets me know what you guys want to see, and hey, share it with a friend if you think they'd like it. Simple little clicks like that really help a channel grow. But I think I've flat my beak enough as is for one video, so I'll leave you with a mishmash kit bash and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.